Ali Brohi, a 30-year-old man who lives in Sindh, Pakistan. One July morning, the screams of the villagers woke Ali up in the house where he had spent his entire life. As he rushed out, Ali witnessed his entire field of crops, his livelihood drowned in water. Without thinking, Ali grabbed the arm of his wife, carried his three-year-old son on his shoulder, and ran out with the villagers, as more than half of his body was underwater. A few minutes later, the realization hit him. Ali had lost all his possessions in this flood. His eyes filled with tears. This is not just Ali's story. This is the story of 33 million people from my country, Pakistan, as the worst floods of the country's history hit us in 2022. In a matter of days, one third of the country was underwater. And this was a man-made catastrophe. As we speak, countries like Bangladesh, Somalia, the Philippines are under the same threat. Notice a pattern? Yes, all of these countries are developing countries with much smaller industries and emissions compared to developed countries like the, US, the USA, one of the largest contributors of the global carbon emission. Then why is it that they suffer the most? Is it just? Is it fair? No, it's not. And we need to fix this now before it's too late. Now, the topic of climate change is not new, and you've probably heard about it millions of times before, and don't want to be lectured by another 17-year-old. However, what I'm here to highlight today is that the effect of climate change is not the same for everyone. According to the World Meteorological Organization, 91% of the deaths caused by the climate crisis since 1970 occurred in developing nations. We have failed to deliver social justice once again. Now, the truth is that there is work being done to counter these issues. People started becoming more aware of the problem after the Kyoto Protocol of 1997. As the threat became more real, climate change became a political agenda in the developed world. It then led to government regulations like carbon tax, or even creating global market opportunities for businesses to reduce their emissions and become more efficient. The International Financial Corporation states that businesses tend to gain $12 trillion a year in market opportunities by becoming more sustainable. But the problem still stands. Despite these efforts to counter these issues, the effect is much larger. We cannot match the speed of this destruction. And climate change does not care who contributes the most. In fact, today, the, most, the smallest contributors are at the highest risk. This is why I demand climate justice, an idea that all countries and communities should be treated equitably, especially those who face disproportionate effects of climate change. Firstly, we need to counter issues in the developed world to arrest climate change. However, we have seen a lot of greenwashing on the money spent in these initiatives. Now, what is greenwashing? Greenwashing is basically when big businesses paint a false picture of sustainability to sell their products to us, when in reality they have no real impact whatsoever. By doing this, they are able to satisfy governments and all of us as consumers, all the while saving millions of dollars and building an eco-friendly re uh, reputation. My argument is that instead of wasting this money into greenwashing, direct it towards mandatory reparations. Tie the recognition of green investment to mandatory work in affected parts of the world to restore them. For example, if I am a European multinational, I should not be able to gain carbon tax credits based on the money solely spent on green operations in Europe. But instead, I should be forced to spend part of that money in South America, Africa, Asia, 
as the global south is the most affected in this race of industrialization. By doing this, we will be able to create a balance between stopping climate change and healing affected nations across the globe. We will also be able to raise awareness in these affected communities so they can adapt sustainable practices in the early stages and we can save the earth from what we have seen in the name of industrialization in the developed world. Now, we also need to ensure equitable representation in international climate negotiations by amplifying the voices of the developing nations and also by addressing the existing power imbalances. Our change in climate does not just threaten our natural world. It profoundly jeopardizes the fundamental rights of the most sustainable, the susceptible among us. Our right to life, our right to good health, and our right to a safe and secure living environment. The necessity of climate reparations isn't just about rectifying our past mistakes. It's also about securing the fundamental freedoms that belong to every single one of us. Now picture this, a world that stands on the firm pillars of sustainability. The lands of our earth united in the common pursuit for clean energy. Each individual having equal access to good food and a secure living condition. The burdens and benefits of our climate distributed equitably across all societies, cultures, and communities. The laughter of our children, free from the worries of environmental crises, echoing in our schools and our parks. Think about what it would be like to have a future where every new generation is born into a world of vitality, a world they can trust, a world that provides for them just as nature intended. This vision isn't just a fantasy. It's a future that we must strive towards. It's a future that requires courage, commitment, and collective action. But above all, it's a future that begins with us today.